welcome Barry Morton. I get to speak ahead of Judge Moore, but that's a pretty tough act to follow. But uh, at any rate, I think Miss Sue and Judge Moore, he covered how I feel on politics, and she pretty well told you a little bit about myself. I'll go on a few personal stories just so you'll know more about me. Um, I grew up at a, bat, a farm down here at Baton's Crossroads. Uh, the Moore family has been paying taxes in Coffee County since 1852, so we've been here and done that for a long time. Um, is recently we were doing a men's Bible study at church and there was a, a thing that said that you need to go back and figure out who it was and how you got shaped and what molded the person that you are today. So as I began to go through this men's fraternity Bible study, I realized that uh, one of the most powerful stories in my life was when I was a little bitty boy. And, uh, and I was having to, uh, we dad was at the, he was down at the Metcalf Tractor Company. And we were in there, and there was this little Ford tractor in a box, and it was 8,600, and you could turn the steering wheel, and it was just fantastic toy. My brother and I, he was a little younger than me, we just fell in love with it. But uh, back in the day, it's not like it is now. We couldn't stand in the aisle and cry about it. We just said, hey, Dave, did you, Dad, did you notice that toy over there? It was really awesome. And so we went out, and um, we got in the truck, and we were driving. He said, boys, if y'all want that tractor, he said, you need to figure out how to earn it. He said, y'all need to come up with a plan. And sure enough, we did. We started picking up the cons. And me and we got our buddies to help us, and we picked up paper sack after paper sack of pecan. And uh, we sold them down here at Fred's Feet and Seed. We went over there and bought those toy tractors, and I tell you, that tractor meant something to me because I had earned it. And I think we've got to pass that along to the next generation. We've got to pass that along to our people. We've got this mindset of instant gratification. If we went right now, but that's not good. It's going to take some tough choices, Judge Moore. It's going to take some tough choices to change what's going on in my God. It's not going to be good. And so that's how I, I learned just the idea of hard work and earning what you got. You know, Get out there and get after the program and sort of, same way I built the business. Uh, when I moved back here a few years ago, um, there was an opportunity to start a garbage company. At that time, Mark Dunning had sold a waste manager. And uh, I thought, you know, we need a local company to provide the service to local people. And so I started a garbage company. Just bought me an old $6,000 front load truck, and I drove it. Got up at 3 in the morning, went out and dumped garbage cans. And I and to this day, I still have a shower in my office from that experience. <laughs> you sometimes come home behind drawing so long, and sometimes you come home with God all the other stuff. You know, so I find myself showering at the shop about 7 a.m., and I go out and sell accounts all day. And then I get up at 3 in the morning, and I drive a garbage truck. And so I built a business that way. I've learned that that's what it takes. And we need to give our kids that opportunity, you know. That's why I'm here now is because i got an 8-year-old, and I want him to be able to start a garbage company or a farm a printing shop, whatever it is he wants to do. But today as a small business owner, you have a bullseye on your back. If you were out there, somebody said, I wrote this down, that the government's idea of economy is if it's moving, you tax it. If it keeps moving, you regulate it. And if it fails, you subsidize it. And that's their idea of creating jobs. And that's true. I mean, they want us, They just want to tax you to death, tax you to death. And what's happening is I'm seeing it day by day, y'all. I am seeing weary business leaders. Because we have so many customers out there. I deal with them on a day-in and day-out basis. And they're closing the doors. They're laying people off. And our legislature's getting a 62% pay raise. It just doesn't make sense. They're not working for us anymore. And so there's some simple ideas on the economy. We just need to cut costs and stimulate growth. Y'all, I believe right now, what is it, 9 and 4, Ms. Sue? It's 8 now. 8 and 4. <laughs> 8 and 4 in the Alabama House and Senate, we could take it. The Republicans, for the first time since the Civil War, 136 years, we have not had a Republican majority. And I've met some of the young caucusmen. And I've met guys that are running, they think like I think. I'm not going up there for the money. Matter of fact, I thought if it wasn't too unpopular, I'd try to repeal the pay rate. I don't know how that'll go over. But we need to give the money back to the people. We can at least establish trust, right? I mean, at least y'all say, hey, you know what? He went up there and cut his pay for the first time in the history of Alabama. Maybe these guys, we can keep them. Maybe these guys are thinking about us instead of themselves. And I don't want to be a career politician, you know. Um, I want to come back and go fishing. I want to come back and run my company. But I want to leave the opportunities for the next generation. We've been afforded some fantastic opportunities as young people in this nation. We have been, we've become an entitlement group. We think that we're owed something. You don't owe me anything but opportunity. If you'll give me opportunity to level play the law succeed. But nowadays kids think we've got to have government programs. We've got to have bailouts. We can't get there without it. And we're losing our way. As a nation and a state, we're losing our way. And so that's the economy. I'll tell you real quick on ethics reform. Um, 
we need to look at, on ethics reform, there's a couple things. Y'all realize that the PACs can give a politician $250 a day without reporting it? Have y'all done the math? That's $1,750 a week from one PAC. That's more than you're going to pay me to go up there. Who do you think they're working for? We need to report that money. Every single dime of it, we need to know where it was, what it was used for. That's like $25 a day or more you need to report. And another thing, too, is if we can do these pack to pack transfers, that's what Judge Moore was talking about with the name has. But these pack to pack transfers, they're hiding their money. They're moving around. You don't know who's working for who anymore. Y'all need somebody working for you. I want to do that. I want to be that person. Not because I want to be a politician, but because I want to save that opportunity for the next generation. And, and you know, Alex, I'd rather finish. There's some other things I'd rather do. But there's not many small business owners that can go and run. Because you think of a doctor as a small business owner, he's got to see patients or he can't make any money. A dentist has got to see patients or he can't make any money. And so that just leaves a few of us out here that are in a position to go and do what needs to be done. And it's not going to be easy. A lot of things I've done in life wasn't easy. I hope many are all peanuts, and it wasn't easy. But it was just part of that process. They put you out there to get with the program. And so we learned some valuable lessons. And that's the lessons we need to leave for our kids and generations on down the road. Let's see. The economy we talked about, I'm trying to do the three things. Education. <laughs> economy, what do we say? Hey, there's education, economy, and ethics. Okay, last but not least. Um, education. The problem with education in Alabama, and this ain't going to be real popular, it's going to pop up. And there you go. That's right. <laughs> Y'all know how that works, don't you? They'll spend $100,000 to beat me this time, to keep me from getting in office. And then day two, when I beat my opponent, they'll walk into my office and put their arm around me and go, you know, Barry, you're a pretty smart guy. And we didn't like the other guy anyway. <laughs> and then they'll say something like, but you know something, your wife, Heather, she's got the public degree, degree, public relations degree from Auburn. She's a magna cum laude student, and she's president of the PTO. We sure could use her over at so-and-so school as a public relations director. Or we could use her at so-and-so junior college, or whatever it is. And before you know it, if you take the faith, you've had it. Because six weeks from now, when they call you and say, hey, we need to vote this way on this bill. If you say no, oh, about that job your wife had. And that guy. So we need to insulate ourselves as young legislators from that kind of stuff. We need to stand our ground and go up there for the right reasons. We're never supposed to be a career politician. And I'd like to say, well, we need term limits. And that's probably true. But y'all realize you have term limits? It's called a ballot box every four years. If you vote the rascal in, it's your own fault. You know? So vote them out and put some people in there that can do the job.